The Book of True Life, Teaching 16 of 366, The Master Teaches. God is not silent and has never been silent. Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, May the peace of the spirit and of the heart be in all those who love one another. On this day of grace, you have come to receive the inspiration of the Master, which is grasped by the brain of these children, prepared and destined by me to transmit my divine message to mankind. Receive on this day my spiritual caress, O multitudes. I welcome and fill you with grace. Listen, O disciples. Be mindful that an atom of my presence is manifesting itself among you. A vibration of the divine power is indoctrinating you. An aura of his universal essence is illuminating you. There has not been any time in which the manifestation of God has not existed. During all eras and all ages, there was, there is, and there will be the divine vibration. During the course of time, the Father has not failed to bestow upon you the charity of his love, because in his spirit, as in all creation, everything vibrates, everything is activity and life. And the incidents of this world are an echo and a reflection of the spiritual life. During the course of the centuries, God has not forsaken mankind, for one and the other are inseparable. Today, the will of the Father has been to communicate spiritually with man, in the manner that you are contemplating and hearing, because the time has come for you in which you should prepare yourselves in order to receive me from spirit to spirit. But you still do not have spiritual sensitivity, and that is why you cannot perceive the divine inspiration clearly. Before the Father manifested himself to mankind in Jesus, he conveyed his revelations by using symbols and material events. By the name of Christ, you knew the one who manifested the love of God among men. But when he came to earth, he had already manifested himself as the Father. Therefore, you should not say that Christ was born in the world. It was Jesus who was born, and Christ who dwelt in his body. Meditate, and you will conclude by understanding me, accepting that before Jesus, he was already Christ, because Christ is the love of God. Defining it thus, you will not be confused. Do not let yourselves be submerged in the turbulent waters of ancient and erroneous interpretations which you hold by tradition. You are covered with veils of ignorance, which I have come to rend with the light of my word, so that the wisdom will penetrate within you. Do not forget, therefore, that Christ is the love of God. For that reason, when he manifested himself through Jesus, you were perturbed and confused. And even when you beheld his miracles, you did not believe him, because his power being infinite, your limited reason could not comprehend it. That is why some reject me, others are confused, and still others study and analyze me according to their manner of thinking and understanding. Few, very few, are those who are able to understand Christ. I say this to you, for I find little love within the hearts, since you do not love one another, not even among brothers. Love your fellow man, as you would your own son, and that will be when you will begin to understand Jesus, to love him, to feel him, and be able to reflect Christ in your deeds. 
However, your spirit knows me even more. That is why some seek the Messiah, others seek the Almighty God, so that he may give you a ray of light and hope to come and relieve your pains and encourage you in your desire to come nearer to him each time. The fact is that your spirit, through its conscience, has the memory of its creator, of Christ, who has never stopped seeking and loving you. O oh, humanity, for again I say to you that the spiritual manifestation has never ceased to exist, nor will it ever cease to be. The illuminated of previous times always beheld rays of brilliance. They always listened to my word. The prophets, the inspired ones, the forerunners, the founders of doctrines of elevated spirituality, have given testimony of hearing voices as if proceeding from clouds, from the mountains, from the wind, or from somewhere which they could not pinpoint. That they heard the voice of God as if proceeding from tongues of fire and in mysterious echoes. Many heard saw and felt through their senses, others through their spiritual attributes, in a manner similar to what is happening in this period. Truly, I say to you, those who received my messages through their corporeal senses interpreted the divine inspiration spiritually, and they did it according to their material or spiritual preparation and in agreement with the times in which they lived on earth, in a way that is taking place today with the human instruments whom you call spokesmen or faculties. But I must say to you that during previous times, as well as the present, they have mingled with the purity of the divine revelations, their own ideas or those which predominated around them, and fully aware or ignoring it. They have altered the purity and unlimited essence of the truth, which, truthfully, I say to you, is the love in its greatest manifestations. The vibrations and spiritual inspirations were with them, and not only the first ones, but also the last have given and will give testimony of that inspiration which reached their spirit almost always in an unexplained way, in a similar manner which happens to many today, and will happen to many more tomorrow. The words, interpretations, and form of behavior are credited to men and the times in which they live, but above everyone is the supreme truth. You, for lack of spiritual preparation, need for the divine inspiration to materialize and awake you from your lethargy. The advanced spirits have not needed this form of manifestation. Everything spiritual in the universe is a fountain of light, visible or invisible to you. That light is strength, it is power, it is inspiration. From the ideas, words, and deeds, light also emanates, according to the purity and elevation that they have. The more elevated the idea or the deed, the more delicate and gentle its vibration and inspiration which emits from it, although it is also more difficult for the slaves of materialism to perceive it. Nevertheless, the effect which is exerted spiritually by the thoughts and elevated deeds is great. Materiality is contrary to spirituality, but understand that I am referring to materiality which induces you toward errors, vices, degeneration, and lowly passions. Although the greater part of mankind will question the truth of my communication with man, truly I say to you, once again, that such a manifestation is a continuous one among incarnated and discarnated spirits from the first moment of their creation. If you, making use of your ingenuity and your science, which is one of many spiritual attributes that you have, have managed to transmit messages saving distances, 
How can you think that God is not able to transmit a message to man by means of a human apparatus, sensitive and intelligent? Because that is what the human body is, an apparatus endowed with a perfection that man cannot give to his most complicated and greatest scientific works. Be very attentive to my word. I speak to you about the body of man and not his spirit. Because the spirit, although it is unable to attain the power of the Father, definitely is able to perform greater deeds than what its limited human body can produce. If your limited intelligence has enabled you to attain knowledge and has created inventions, which, according to you, are marvelous, then what can you not accomplish through your spirit, and what deeds is the Father not capable of performing? A poor idea he has of his God, he who believes him to be smaller than human beings. Why does it seem strange to you that God transmits his light, which is wisdom and which is vibrating over all of you, and that he has created a form of communication with his children? Why do you imagine that something is impossible for your God, when you yourselves declare that he knows all and does all? If you believe me thus, why do you contradict yourselves so easily? Are you going to demand from me that each time I desire to speak to you, I send Jesus, so that you will nail him to a cross? Truly, I say, that not even you yourselves realize how you want my presence to be felt among you. In order to please you, I say to you, that if you do not want me to make use of sinful bodies to give you my love, show me a just and cleansed person. Point out someone who among you is able to love, and I assure you that I will use him. Understand that I make use of sinners to attract sinners, for I have not come to save the just. They are already in the realm of light. It is true that you are sinners, but God does not neglect or forget anyone, although you believe otherwise. Why have you become so blind that you are ready to judge everything in an instant according to your material existence? You are the ones who are neglectful and forget your own selves. That is why you feel weak and exhausted. Do you believe that I would forsake my very beloved children even when they are disobedient, since they always need me and call me? You sin very much, commit offenses, and have greatly forgotten me. But infinitely greater than all the faults of your existence is the love of the Heavenly Father for all his children. I will keep on speaking to you about my manifestation, so that you will be relieved of all your doubts. Many of you accept what my illuminated ones have said to you, mainly, that God spoke to them by means of clouds, fire, water and wind, and I ask you, is it more appropriate that I communicate with man by means of these elements, or by means of man himself? Where is your analysis which does not enable you to understand the easier lessons? Oh, men and women of the world who have forgotten in your sciences the only thing that will make you wise and happy. You have forgotten about the love which inspires all. The love which does everything and changes everything. You live in pain and in darkness. For by not practicing the love which I teach you, you bring about your physical or spiritual suffering. In order to discover and understand my messages, 
First, you need to be kind and humble of heart. Virtues which exist within every spirit since the moment of their creation. But to feel the true, elevated feeling of love, you need to spiritualize yourselves, cultivating your good sentiments. But you have wanted to have everything in life, except spiritual love. At every moment, you vibrate, mentally or spiritually. But most of the time, you instigate egotism, hatred, violence, vanity, lowly passions. You offend others, and you feel offended. But you do not love, and therefore you are not aware when someone loves you. And with your insane thoughts, you are saturating the environment in which you live with suffering, filling your existence with misery. And I say to you, Saturate everything with peace, harmony, love, and thus you will be happy. Love has always existed in the spirit of the Creator. Therefore you must understand that all spirits have also been endowed by it. Now, in spite of the advancement of your civilization, you have grown more and more distant from Mother Nature as well as from the spiritual, from what is pure, from what pertains to God. That is why during each stage of your existence, you have fallen into greater weakness, into greater bitterness, in spite of your wishes to be stronger and happier each passing day that you live on earth. But you will take a step toward the fulfillment of my law, O inhabitants of the world. The master who has spoken to you in all times comes now to explain his teaching to you by means of these lessons, manifesting himself in word, intuition and inspiration, thus awakening your spirit to the light of the future times. At that time, you will have the divine inspiration in different forms, each time more surprising, more elevated and perfect for you. Today, I have come to remind you that you must love one another, as Jesus taught you. I remind you of Jesus, for the incarnation of the universal love was in him. During the times of Moses, a law of justice was given to the people, which stated, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Such a law, which today would seem monstrous and vengeful was nevertheless just for men of those times. Some time afterward, when I became human as Jesus, you heard me say, and it was written, that the measure you give will be the measure you get. At this word, some have asked if within that phrase there exists the love, charity and forgiveness which Jesus preached. It is time that I myself should explain to you the reason for the law of the first era and the reason for that phrase of Jesus, because I had to give you many of my lessons in parts throughout the ages. In the beginning, when the fibers within the heart of man were insensitive to the sentiment of forgiveness and that of charity and tolerance were still dormant in his spirit. It was necessary for man to protect himself, as well as his possessions, supported by a law that would give him a right to use force in his own defense. As you can see, they were primitive precepts and customs for a people destined to evolve, like all other peoples. The law emanating from the word of Jesus later came to illuminate the life of men, and it stated, Love one another. It also revealed to you that the measure you give will be the measure you get, with which the master wanted you to understand that the sentence which man had imposed upon himself by his own hand had become an exclusive right of the divine justice. Then man realized that according to his sowing on earth, 
thus would be the harvest that he would gather in the hereafter. Man then held back his destructive hand. The evildoer many times desisted from his evil intentions, and he who intended to steal knew and sensed that a gaze from infinity beheld him, and from that moment a judgment awaited him. The centuries have passed, and men, knowing more about the divine justice, still have not been able to understand the truth, and many times they have become confused, believing that if they have sinned greatly on earth, unmercifully they will have to present themselves before the tribunal of God to receive an eternal punishment. To which I ask you, what purpose of repentance and compliance with my law would emerge from the one who beforehand considers himself lost? What hope would lodge within the one who departs from this world, knowing that the faults of his spirit will be eternal? It became necessary that I myself come to withdraw from you the ignorance of your erroneous interpretations. And here I am. In Jehovah, you believed to have seen a cruel, terrible and vengeful God. Then the Lord, to free you from error, sent Christ, his divine love, so that by knowing the Son, you would also know the Father. And nevertheless, humanity, ignorant and involved in its sin again, believes to see an angry and offended Jesus, who only awaits the spiritual return of those who have offended him to say to them, Depart from me, for I know you not and then sent them to endure the most inhumane suffering in eternity. It is time that you understand the meaning of my teachings, so that you will not be confused. The divine love will not hinder your return to me if you do not restitute for your faults. It will be the inexorable judge of your conscience who will say that you are not worthy of penetrating the kingdom of light. O oh, humanity, you have my presence again, but in spirit, just as I promised you. Behold the light of the spirit of truth, how it illuminates and awakens those who dwell in darkness. But I say to those who are witnesses to this manifestation, be attentive to my word for it comes to open pathways of light and to disclose to you the truth which you should know. It is true that during your lifetime it is necessary to settle all accounts before God, but the payment, tribute or offering which you give him in reality is not for him, but to whoever offers it. If you offer him purity, that will be for your own benefit. If you present to him good deeds, they will be the garments which will exalt your spirit before the presence of God. If you sin and then you repent and make amends for your faults, the peace for your spirit and the happiness which exists in those who practice righteousness will be your reward. If many times I permit you to drain the same cup that you gave to your brethren, it is because there are some who only in this way realize the wrong they caused, and by experiencing the same ordeal which they caused to others, they will become aware of the pain they have provoked. This will give light to their spirit and bring understanding, repentance, and therefore fulfillment of my law. But if you wish to avoid going through pain or draining the cup of bitterness, you can succeed in resolving your debt with repentance, with good deeds, with all that your conscience dictates you must do. In that way you will settle an account of love, you will restore an honor, 
a life or the peace, health, happiness, or the bread that you may have taken from your fellow men. Observe how different is the reality of my justice from that idea that you have formed of your father. Do not forget that if I have come to tell you that none of you will be lost, it is also true that I have said that every debt must be settled and every fault erased from the book of life. You have the right to choose the path which leads to me. The freedom of choice is still yours. If you prefer the law of retaliation of ancient times, as is still practiced by men from their proud nations, behold its results. If you want the measure with which you judge your brethren also used against you, do not even wait for your entry into the other existence to receive my justice. For here, when you least expect it, you will find yourself in the same difficulty in which you placed your fellow men. But if you want a more elevated law to come to your aid, not only to spare you from suffering, which is what you fear most, but also to inspire in you noble thoughts and good sentiments, pray, call me, and proceed along your path to struggle to be better each time, to be stronger in your ordeals, or, in short, to settle with love the debt that you have with your father and with your fellow men. The call of love that you hear now from the lips of these spokesmen is precursory to great happenings for mankind. These messages are flashes of wisdom that in the future will be manifested to men. It is the beginning of the awakening of all spirits. It is the preparation for the era of spirituality, the time in which you will be redeemed in the love of your Heavenly Father. My peace be with you.